Good day, good night, shalom, balance, paradise, and righteousness all. Niha, Ola, and all of the uh, universal greetings. Back diligently working in the lab, hard, even though it's nice and sunny kind of thing, a little bit of clouds, finally in England. Got a special guest, kept it very local. I'm not thousands of miles away. I'm down, I've got a guest from South London, a artist, a producer, a singer, uh, the one and only, Sasha T, what's happening? Hello, hello, how are you? <laughs> Wonderful to see star, thank you very much for uh, gracing uh, the broadcast with your presence. Yeah, as we, for having me. You're most welcome, you're most welcome. As we um, briefly touched on before we started, um, I stumbled across your dulcet tones and thought, wow, you know, this this uh, young lady has some talents, some raw <laughs> talents. Thank and, you. <laughs> and the subject matters um, quite pleasing as well. So I thought, you know, we've we've got to extend the uh, the olive branch and uh, get you on to to chop it up and get a little bit behind the artistry and the artist and all of the wonderful things as well. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to, to share. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like. That's what we like. So before before we even jump into into you and 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 go back in time like we always do, um, <laughs> zombie apocalypse 2020 2021. It's been a challenging, tumultuous um, period, year plus. Yes. Um, how has that affected you, if any? Pluses, minuses, and everything in between. Um, I think yeah, it's been a bit. It's been a bit of a, a roller coaster, ups and downs. I feel like it's been like that for everyone. But um, yeah, I've had my my struggles and my like my mental health moments and the anxiety moments. Um, I didn't I didn't notice how much of a clean freak I was until the pandemic hit, and I was like sanitize, sanitize, wash my hands. Um, but at the same time, I feel like it's given me a good opportunity to reflect and figure out some things um and and to be honest I've, I've always said to everyone I feel like I'm not saying it's my fault but I've been after the uh Christmas period in 2019 I was like I just need more time I'm not ready to get back to normal life and obviously everything stops during Christmas so I was like I'm not ready to get back to normal life and I just need more time and then the pandemic hit and I was like well be careful what you wish for. So you manifested I got, I got it. it. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I I got what I wanted, and I couldn't be upset about it, and I was able to use it to my advantage. So yeah, it's been it's been rocky, but I think I mastered it at the Good. end. Good to hear. Yeah. I think you you you've joined the um the majority now. I think the majority of people who I've um, spoken to over this period over this interesting time we, we, we are in and found ways to win you know whether yeah, that's exactly internally like readjust adjusting things um finding new hobbies uh, really looking at mm-hmm. your, your your quote-unquote friends circle that inner circle and thinking you know who should I really be investing all of this damn time in this person I'm, <laughs> you know I don't I'm not really getting them back yeah. kind of thing um, so it's it's good to hear. It's good to hear that. As I say, it has been very challenging, um, mm-hmm. not being able to freely operate as um, sentient beings um, and interact. Yeah. Most importantly, that that's part of being, you know, in this quote unquote society and being, you know, part of humanity is to interact to, to socialize. Yeah. And we haven't been able to do that apart from utilizing technology, which I think is a a wonderful thing I think uh, a lot of older people have grasped actually you know what I can speak to my cousin in America on this bloody zoom yeah. thing or yeah. FaceTime <laughs> etc so you know that we we need to always try and look at the cup being half full that's that's my motto exactly a hundred percent we've definitely got um with technology we've got more advanced in how we do things um and yeah I've just seen so many different opportunities for me and other people to grow not just through technology but again through everything we've learned during this time so yeah I've definitely taken it as a positive and taken it as a win and, and trying not to focus on the bad stuff good good to hear yeah. good to hear trustly through our, our conversation you'll you'll be um 
hitting some 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 poignant areas for some people and um you know giving options as well or or, or ideas of actually i've i've got a bit of a talent as well you know maybe i could pursue this now i know music industry is a very hard interesting um at some mm -hmm. times very corrupt um and can be very challenging for someone who may be a little bit fragile of sorts i think yeah. to be in the industry you've got to have you've got to be quite astute um and thick-skinned ultimately because the stories i'm hearing man it's like you serious <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, 100%. It could definitely be crazy. Um, but I think the main thing that people go into the music industry for different reasons. And it's the same with with other jobs. Um, I would even say that, like um, the other jobs that people go for, every industry you, you try to get into is hard. Mm -hmm. And there's different challenges within each. Um, I suppose the music industry is more exposed and is seen as more challenging. But the main thing I would say to anyone is just know who you are and know why you're doing it. Otherwise it's going to be difficult and you're not going to see the point and you'll end up doing things that aren't in your character because you think I, I just have to, this is what I have to do, but it's just stay true to yourself hundred percent and you'll be okay. Yes. Wise words there. And yeah. I think for, for, for anybody, you know, as I genuinely say, be the best version of you every day you know try and find yeah. ways to improve like you know i had a really good day yesterday how can i make today even better not necessarily yeah. looking at oh well that went wrong or you know what went right today let's look at all of the positives and let's try and you know even if you have to get a piece of paper and you know all the negatives down on one side and all the positives on the other side and you know the negatives may outweigh the positives so then it's incumbent exactly. on you now to say, okay, well, how can I remove some of these barriers out of the way yeah. and have more of an even scale, have that balance? 100%. That's the perfect advice. If you can't do it in your head, then write it down. Mm -hmm. 100%. And sometimes yeah. seeing it actually on paper or yeah. in this new age on, on a keyboard, on a, a backlit screen, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's there. It's, it's blatantly yeah. there. It's not just a, a, an idea or a thought that's whizzing yeah. around your head. It, it's on paper now, or, you know, you can actually visually see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good, good, good. So let's us, let's us jump into the DeLorean and let's go back in time. Where would you like to start? in regards Ooh. to your 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 story my story in my musical story or my story in general your story <laughs> in general because that's going to bleed into your musical story yeah I guess um I guess I mean I was born no, I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I think just in in general like my life has been ups and ups and downs mm -hmm. and that kind of it kind of matches my my musical journey mm -hmm. um and I would say maybe from my school days like uh probably from the ages of like five and seven that's when I was I knew I wanted to perform I didn't know what it was I was always on stages and we'd be in the playground making up dance routines okay. and things. Yes, yes, um, yes. But at the same time, I do, I do have my academic side where I do love to, um, like, I really loved maths and I love school and learn. I just like learning new things. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was a balance of both. So you're definitely <laughs> a creative, from what you're saying from an early age, I think, I think there's, there's, there's an element of people who always like to entertain their friends and be like the yeah. center of attention of sorts. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, it's, it's weird for me because I'm very, if this is even possible, I'm an introvert, but at the same time, I try to mask that or hide that with an extrovert energy. Yes. So even in, even in school and all those times where I'm performing, like there would be, things that people didn't see about me or that I didn't like to expose and that kind of performance side was always and I remember it from when I was young the same feeling that I feel now was a way of me kind of playing that character of I'm a performer or I'm, I'm singing now I'm dancing now or I'm acting now I'm being somebody else yes. and I don't have to kind of focus on my own yeah. self and things I'm dealing with so that I feel like my performance was always a mask to 
hide the things that I was really feeling, which is it was healthy in some parts, but at the same time, I had to make sure as I grew up, I learned to deal with some of those things other than just hiding behind Masking, yes. the other bits. Yeah, totally. Yeah. U- utilizing like a, a, a persona. So I would imagine based upon what you're saying, you'd have had multiple personas depending on what you were doing, whether it was a school play, whether you was yeah. like center stage doing the singing thing yeah. or. Yeah. I mean, I, I, to be fair, like I was really competitive in general. So I, I always wanted the lead role. I always wanted to perform. I, it, that kind of changed as I got older and mm-hmm. kind of went into secondary school. But I remember in primary school, I, I definitely wanted the lead role. I like used to work really hard and make sure I rehearsed all the lines and did everything I needed to do for the auditions just to make sure. Okay, it, it was kind of like in a weird way I needed it I I had to have that kind of thing to hide behind doors I couldn't function (laughs) yeah (laughs) so so heritage wise where where are your parents from so my mum my mum and dad are born here but my mum's obviously born in Birmingham Um, my grandparents are from Jamaica um but yeah but my both my parents are British okay yeah so Caribbean, West Indian, Jamaican roots. That's right. That's where I'm from. <laughs> Give thanks. That's where the Empress is from. That's where my Empress is from still. So yeah, man, I know the ones there. Have you have you been back? Yeah. Have you had an opportunity to um I haven't. So we we've been talking about going for ages and even during 2020, like uh we were kind of serious about it and thinking about it, but no, we haven't got we've got quite a bit of family over there as well. So we've got no excuse, but as it. soon as those gates yeah. open, <laughs> God, oh God, I'll be there. <laughs> definitely, definitely do the family trip. I think you you will yeah. thoroughly enjoy it. I think that I think that it will, it will be depending on how much research you've done. I think until you actually get there, um, yeah, you don't fully know. But there is some shocks yeah. you'll get when you get to the Caribbean. It's like, oh, okay, Shit. yeah. But at the same time, it's yeah, a big, I'm it's a, it's. Yeah, man, you're going to really enjoy it. I'll, I'm looking forward to, um, I think it's going to be 2022 now, to be um, quite honest. I know, I'll hang in there. <laughs> we'll see. I'll just get all my stuff ready. I'll start shopping from now. It's fine. I'm definitely this, going. This is it. Most high willing, <laughs> most high willing. We, we, we can go yeah. away at least at, you know, September, October kind of times. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely do something at that point. Definitely. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, that man's sure. looking pale and ting, you know, sis. I, <laughs> I can't deal with these UK clouds anymore. Just going out and sunbathing in the rain. We can't, we you can't. I, mean? I need to be busy. Yeah. This is it, man. And yeah. just like the fresh food, just, just yeah. everything, the humidity rather than, I mean, listen, don't get it wrong. It's, it's wonderful, you know, here when we get the sun and stuff. Like last year, yeah. through lockdown, it was real nice. But it's a dry... Yeah. It's a dry heat, man. 100%. Everyone says the same thing. But the, the heat you get here and the sunshine you get here and then what you get abroad, it's just a different kind of heat. Mm. It's just, it feels really muggy in the UK. Exactly. But then when you go away, it's like, and you, it, can you can spread just, out and enjoy Yeah, man. It. You just do your yeah. thing, man, and a nun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to feeling that on my skin again. Yes. Trustfully, as I say, trustfully, we'll be able to experience something, man. You know, with, yeah. with, with that. Yeah. And, you know, from, from what it can, from what it seems like, I mean, with this roadmap to um, whatever it is, it does seem, I mean, especially obviously yesterday, we saw lots of um, scenes like in, in Nottingham, I'm pretty sure down south as well, there was huge scenes yeah. of teenagers and stuff like partying and it's yeah. it's like it's it's a liberation it's freedom kind of like you know we yeah. can actually converse with each other and meet i mean I, yeah yeah you should still be a little <laughs> bit like careful and stuff but yeah <laughs> it's a good sign yeah. that the confidence is back <clears throat> pardon self of sorts you know um businesses yeah. can try and get back to some form of normality so you know we're kind of, we're moving in the right directions look you know luckily trustfully um the, 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 we don't see that that daily death counts and all that kind of stuff anymore yeah. cases and all that the, I, I think we, we're past that point now there's been yeah. so many people who have been yeah. vaccinated and stuff so I, I i think we're at a point now where the confidence is at a high now if we can just you know 
maintain what we've been maintaining to a point and still yeah. you know enjoy the freedoms quote unquote that we've got now mm-hmm. we should as I yeah. say September October you know they'll finally say yeah go and book a holiday abroad now yeah. and, you know yeah it definitely feels like there's a there's a huge light at the end of the tunnel mm. we're just getting closer and closer so I'm not I'm not taking any diversions I, I don't want to hear anything else any, any, I'm, just, I'm ready to be free <laughs> listen, just I tell think, me we're free I, I think the world would, would 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 or should rebel if we hear any kind of foolishness oh, of, you know like no no 100%. no 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 Mr. <laughs> Mr. Boris you need to go we need to put some yeah. proper people up in that is something so you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah literally I I'm, I'm not hearing anything else if he does another update the only thing I want to hear out of his mouth is it's over you're yes. free that's all I want to hear mm. anything else is a problem to me <laughs> for real for real I, I love yeah. it. I, and not to be negative but look at the impact that he's had I mean you've you've won mm-hmm. over this period you know I've suffered as you say I think you've we've all suffered I think you know physically yeah. not being able to go to the gym uh, mental health wise so yeah. let's look at that in its totality totality yeah There's people who are financially not stable before this damn COVID thing yeah you know that they're, they're relying on on schools to feed their children and stuff and then we had that thing yeah. with the the, the food parcel scandal and all that yeah domestic yeah. vi- abuse and the violence is up like over a thousand percent yeah that's it's it's crazy because even when people ask me I, I genuinely have to give thanks and be so grateful because like to be fair I live with my family so yes at times we drive each other each other crazy but it's been a it's been a decent stay while I've yes. been here and um also I've had company so I've not been alone and there are people who haven't seen their families in a year Mm. so I have to give thanks and be grateful but at the same time I just I don't know I feel like at the beginning because we were all kind of going through it together and no one knew what was happening we had this whole community spirit and I don't know if it just kind of died towards the end so I I have to do what I and even my like talk to myself as well make sure hold on make sure you check on people, make sure, you know, sometimes your friends, the people around you, everything looks okay on the outside, but on the inside, they're struggling at home or they're alone or their mental health is not okay. Or because they can't go to the gym and their physical health is suffering, that kind of seeps into how they feel about themselves. And there's just so many layers to it. And we just really have to be vigilant and pay attention to the people we're around because it's still affecting people today. Totally totally agree yeah. totally agree I think you know being being mindful I mean when I was when I gr- was growing up we knew apart from knowing everybody you know I get, in 2021 you don't necessarily know your neighbor and you might say yeah. hi to them but you don't really know them like that um getting back to like a community where people actually look out for each other it's not it's yeah. not just about self like oh exactly. the door's shut now that's me I don't need to worry about anything or look out for people's cars or if anyone's trying to burglarize their home or anything we need to get back to the sense of like yeah who's that round there kind of thing like yeah. or let me just knock on that old lady you know see how she's doing if she needs yeah. any anything or you know just a conversation yeah. sometimes just to have a conversation with someone can brighten somebody's day Oh, 100%, 100%. We went for a, um, I went for a walk in the park and somebody walked, walking their dog, just walked past and said, good morning. And I turned and I said to my mom, that, that's made my whole life. Mm. Just somebody saying good morning. Yes. They don't, they don't know what I'm going through. I don't know what they're going through, yeah. but they're just sharing something. They're not doing anything, mm-hmm. but we don't understand sometimes one word or something. And even on the flip side, one negative word oh, yes. can really like push somebody over the edge. And then one positive word can really bring someone back. So we just have to be very careful, especially during these times. Definitely, just be careful. Definitely. And as we, as we don't know, words have power, Yeah, have major power. I think some mm-hmm. people, unfortunately, till this day, 20 Gregorian year of 2021, people don't understand, understand or even overstand mm-hmm. the power of words. But yet they will 
They'll yeah. watch these fantastical movies about witches and them creating spells. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not put the two Come and two on. together. Yeah. Like, what, what are we doing yeah. here? Yeah. Word spelt backward How is crazy sword. Is that? <laughs> it, it, it is. It is. How it's, crazy is that? Yeah. It's. Yeah. It is. It is crazy. We don't pay attention to these things. Yeah. Good, good, more, wow. good. But look, let's look, let's break this down for you then. Let's break this. Let's drop one. This jewel. Now this is this is due to the uh, the oh, English really? language. Um. Good morning. We can spell morning how many different ways? Morning. Yeah. Oh God. Two. There's two word, ways to spell morning. Morning, which means a.m. first thing in the day, or when we go to a funeral, we are ah, morning. Yeah. Morning. Because this English language, which is like you know spoken yeah. globally, we don't really we just take words for how they are, not yeah. like what they mean. So you know, yeah. what are you actually saying when you say "good yeah. morning" to me? Yeah, your intent might be good, but subconsciously yeah. or subliminally, like who's who's dead? That and it's good to yeah. and it's good to mourn somebody, is it? Yeah. Like, you know yeah yeah it's so it's so interesting it's so deep but then this is this is where we get caught up sometimes and at the same time as well when you master these things or you have full understanding of mm. these things there's so much power in what you can do yes but it's again it's about it's about knowledge and understanding um mm. and educating yourself to make sure you get it right I'll add another so, one onto that um, yeah. as well. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom as well. Yeah. Because you you, you can have the knowledge, you can understand yeah. the knowledge, but without yeah. having the wisdom to apply. Yeah. Come you know. on. <laughs> <laughs> we got portions That's of the puzzle. Right. And as as the people we are, we need to, you know, we need to be the light of the world. How do we be the light yeah. of the world? You know. Yeah. We express and we do the righteous thing as as much as possible, even though we're infallible, or well, mm -hmm. we're fallible, I should say, and yeah, you know we're yeah. we're definitely non-perfect, and we will slip and we will fall, but the goal mm -hmm. is to you know do unto others as others would have do unto you. Very very simple, a simple concept mm -hmm. that many cannot grasp. That is crazy. Use. Opening up, but well, look, he's got to a point now, sis. He's got to a point now. Sometimes I'm a gentleman, so I will open up doors, yeah, mm -hmm. male, female. I don't matter if I'm in, if I'm ahead, yeah. I'll leave the door open. It hasn't yeah. happened recently, but it happened probably a couple of months back where I opened the door for some for a woman and she gave me the most dirtiest look, like, and she said, Oh, I can hold the door yeah. myself, thank you. <laughs> So I, I oh, thought to myself, goodness. oh, she's one of those feminist types, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's very it's very hard because um, there's a lot there's a lot happening, and there's people arguing that the world has become too sensitive, and um, you can't you can't do anything anymore. If you do one thing that you think is right, you get into trouble, and mm -hmm. if you don't do it, you get into trouble. It's it's, it's very confusing, but. At the same time, I, I'm I'm black and I'm a female, and yes. there's been a lot of movements happening that are for me but are against me. And yes. you, you can sometimes get caught up in everything that's happening. But again, it's about staying true to yourself, staying true to who you are, and not even not letting social media and the world tell you what you're supposed to believe in or what the right thing to do is. Who who are you first? Mm -hmm. and to me like make sure you have let's go back to the education understanding and wisdom <laughs> <laughs> in all of these areas because there are so many people talking about some of these things or females who are men are holding the doors open for them I can hold the door myself but yeah. don't know why they're saying that yes or what what that means they're mm -hmm. just a feminist without without understanding what that means um and without 
then having the ability to be polite. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. A feminist without a cause. There, exactly. There you go. It's just about having knowing who you are, but then having the, the understanding, knowledge and wisdom to be able to take on what people are saying and decipher, hold on a minute, does this make sense or mm-hmm. does this apply to me or how can I make sure I'm not offending anybody but still not being silly yes. with yes. what, what doesn't make any sense. It, no, it makes perfect sense. And in this upside down, topsy-turvy world that we, that they're socially engineered, um, mm-hmm. it's so, so tricky. I mean, what do you remember about two, three weeks ago they were talking about cur- six o'clock curfews for men? Yeah. <laughs> to protect yeah. women. I'm like, what on earth? If we look oh, at the statistics, goodness. more men are attacked, not by just yeah. women, but more men are attacked than women. I mean, it's horrible that a woman should even shouldn't feel safe in the Gregorian yeah. year of 2021. That that is a, that is awful yeah. in itself. Um, yeah. But it's it's it, it almost seems well. It doesn't almost seem like it. it's <clears throat> an industry has been created around criminality on the mm-hmm. black market. And let, 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 let's look at the whole picture. So you, we've got the criminal elements in all the various guises and forms. And if they cross that line and they're caught by the police, yeah, that, that part of the industry takes over. Yeah. So then the police who are getting paid by taxpayers' money, they yeah. get the arrest. Then we've got lawyers who get paid. We've got barristers who get paid. We've got then the <laughs> privatized prison system, G Forest and Circle, who then yeah. take over. Who maintains these these prisons? It's outside contractors. Who caters for these these prisons? Again, outside contractors. So that it's mm. on each end, somebody is 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 profiting off the dysfunctionality and the yeah. criminality of society. Yeah. Yeah. So it, These are the things they're not paying attention to. They're, they're really not. They're really not. Yeah. And, and as young, malleable minds, up until the age of, what, 25, 26 at the latest, your brain start, stops forming. So as a 16-year-old, yeah. 17-year-old who may have a lot of wisdom for your age, you're still developing. You're still developing yeah. your ideas of, a, of, of who you are as a person. Where do you fit in in this world? You know, what do you stand for? ultimately what's your purpose when I was yeah. when I was a teenager I didn't know what my purpose was you yeah. know who, who, who was going to guide me who, who apart from your um the careers remember the careers careers teachers and all that oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, I remember those <laughs> um, yeah I, I definitely remember those and then you think now how how useful were they to who we are? This is the point. This is another point. <laughs> I, I didn't have the best schooling system or the fooling system or experience within that that uh, fooling system. Um, <laughs> yeah. Due to the fact that I was a very mature person, young young person, mm-hmm. and I, and I would just say it like it is. If I say yeah. it's so wrong. I'm just going to call it. So when I'm yeah. seeing a teacher not actually teaching, and I'm going to, I'm going to clearly go up to that teacher and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're a teacher, right? We're pupils. That kid over there has asked you a question. And you've told him, oh, shut up. You know how yeah. to do the thing. Like, you, you, you're you big and bad enough. You know how to answer the question. And he's asked you yeah. like three times. You're not doing your job as a teacher. And then as a result of that, sis, what do you think happens? You're disruptive, you are. Yeah. You're defiant yeah. and you're disrespectful. You can't say yeah. those things to teachers. Yeah. So it's like... I, yeah, I was, I was the same. I'm not even, even going to lie. Um, very, um, <laughs> very diplomatic, I will say, in my responses. And I, 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 how do I say this? Because... I have to make sure I say it in the in the right way. I don't have I don't have a problem with authority. I have a problem with people that try to use that authority yes. to like out of place. Mm-hmm. The, you misuse I, the power. I would always say, oh yeah, 
hundred percent. I would always say, even to, even to teachers, in the nicest way, the the respect is not just there because I'm told I have to give it to mm. you. You have to respect me just as much as I have to respect yes. you. That's that's just as simple yes. as it is. And if I didn't feel like I was getting that from a teacher, or I didn't feel like a teacher was giving that to another student, so that the even the example that you gave with somebody asking the teacher a question, you respect the child enough to answer <laughs> because simple, it's the yeah. job. Yes. And don't just be disrespectful because you can't be bothered. So I, I was exactly the same. I, I get it. I agree with you there. <laughs> and to a point, listen to this. I, was exactly the same. I went one step even further with, with um, well, not one step yeah. further, an additional thing also, obviously in class, in, in lessons, um, you know, you'd be set homework, for instance, probably third year, fourth year, you get homework and that. So then I'd complete the homework during the lesson. I'd do my work, and the lesson, and I'd do, do the homework. There you go. And the first few times they were like, mm, nah, you couldn't have done that because we, 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 that was supposed to be for you to do later. I'm like, no, nah, I've done it. There you go. Check it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. then I would then have to, <laughs> on a, I think it was four days a week, three or four days a week, they used to give you homework. So on, on those four days, I had to stop after from 3.15 until 3.45 okay. to then meet the teachers in the staff room for them to give me additional homework. Really? Yeah. And, and I, was, I, was in, I was in, and this is, listen to this for the, for the hypocrisy. I'm doing this and I'm in the bottom classes and they're giving me the homework for the top classes. So how does that make sense? <laughs> because of, because I challenged authority and I was disruptive, yeah. allegedly, yeah. with air quotes. Yeah. Um, you know, I was disruptive and all this kind of stuff. So, of course, yeah. you, 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 you know. And that, that's where you can get turned off from education. And I wasn't turned off from education. Yeah. I was just turned off from teachers who were just yeah. there to get paid. Yeah. And you had a minority 100%. who really, really enjoyed wanting, you know, the youth to, to learn and, and, and to help them. And I got on like a house on fire with those, with those teachers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's always, it's always the case. You can definitely spot the teachers that are there for the students mm-hmm. and the teachers that are there because they've wanted to be a teacher all their life to get the check and to just say they're established as a teacher and be a professional, but not yeah. wanting to do it for the for the children. So yeah, you could definitely tell the difference. Totally. 100%. I think I'm gonna do a um I'm gonna do a whole podcast totally dedicated to my experiences at school. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. That's a good idea. So many people will be able to resonate with it, whether you were a top student or someone who was at the bottom or, or wherever you sat everyone would be able to resonate with that one totally (laughs) i think i mean just 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 going back into the 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 mental rolodex the memory banks some of the stuff i don't think they could get away with some of the stuff they did when i was at school yeah it it was borderline abuse some of what some of the teachers were doing (laughs) honestly when I want to think about it there's no way like there was a French teacher called Mr Norbury I'm putting his name out there yeah (laughs) (laughs) and this wicked person right uh I'm I'm sure my agent will be here now but for French French (laughs) lessons we used to have these little tapes a series of tapes Mm -hmm. that used to teach a teacher the language basically he didn't he just put these tapes in and (laughs) So there was like a little intro, intro introduction to the um to the to the lesson basically like a little musical interlude kind of thing. Yeah. And it used to last for like about a minute to two minutes. And and me and my few few of my friends used to like, you know, used to mess about obviously when the music would come on, you know, do a little jig and stuff. And this crazy teacher would demand every time, oh you you want to mess about in the class and and, and dance around here. Every lesson that we went to, that we had to get up and do some kind of dance for, for, for this teacher. <laughs> and the, the first time he said it, we just looked at each other like, "You can't be serious." Yeah. 
Because, yeah, get up here, get up in front of all the class <laughs> and do the little fucking dance and stuff. And oh, my looking. God. So I walked up to the front of the class and I stood there like, you out of your mind. Yeah. There's no way I'm doing this, man. And, no, uh, that, imagine that today. That'd be on the news. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in the papers. Oh, my goodness. These, oh, goodness. The millennials and you know Generation Alpha and and, and Beta, they don't yeah. know nothing about. They they've yeah. got it easy, man. They've got it easy to a point because there were a lot of predators now. It would seem within the um. Oh yeah, that's yeah. quite shocking to say the least. I mean, it's a a lot more in the public eye now yeah. in regards to this kind of stuff. But the especially in America, they they, they, they seem to breed those kind of people over there. A hundred percent. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's social media because what makes it interesting is now you kind of have all of these stories with like the Me Too movement Mm -hmm. and like people coming out and sharing their stories. So I don't know if it's now just being publicized and people know as soon as something happens, you can just go to, you don't even have to go to the police. You don't have to go anywhere else. Just go to social media with your story and someone will deal with it. Mm -hmm. And now it's cut. It feels like there's a lot and maybe there's people who have who have been through it and they've just hid, hidden their stories I, I don't know but it definitely feels like America has an influx of these stories yeah. and it's just I don't I don't know what's happening it's worrying if, if I were if you know as as someone who's got a, a, a plethora of nieces and nephew I don't have any children yeah. myself but I'm worried when they go to school sometimes you know well I, yeah. well when my mind allows me to to drift into those kind of areas because it's like yeah you, you give your your innocent children you know over f- for x amount of hours to be educated by adults yeah and you've got some weird people man you have some real yeah. strange people who yeah. it's it's disappointing it's very disappointing i think there needs to be a lot more stringent checks and i think they need to be paid more how about this for a zany idea sasha how about rather than paying footballers and all these flipping stupid people, all these crazy money, why don't we give mm-hmm. that money? Why don't the doctors and nurses and, and the teachers, why don't they get the money? Why don't they get paid £160,000 a week in that? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't understand this whole system. And I, I don't I don't get it. And even when there was that whole debate a couple of weeks ago where the wages for the NHS oh. went up. Is it 1% or 1.2% no. or something? Yeah, that was it. Yes, yes. Yeah. I I remember just I was literally lost for words because after everything we've been through, after all the clapping, after all the support the NHS, rainbows in the window, yes. and people doing doing all of this stuff, and this is this is this was my gripe with the whole putting rainbows in the window and going outside to clap for that. I love the idea of it, and you know showing solidarity. Yeah, I get it. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. But what are we actually doing for them? A hand clap is not I know. I know. bringing bringing them back to where they need to be mentally after seeing all all of this mm-hmm. tragedy and mm. them having to uh, struggle financially. And I, I don't know. It it didn't make any sense to me. I I thought it was a slap in the face. And if I was a nurse or a doctor, I think I would have quit. <laughs> I think I would have. Um, <laughs> It, it, it's it's a thankless job. It really is a thankless yeah. job, especially for the teachers. I mean, I'm hearing that teachers having to buy flipping like crayons and shit for to con- yeah. to do classes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's almost it. No, I keep on saying it's almost like I'm just telling it like it is. They're setting the youth, the generation, the future up to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Plain and that's, simple. That's exactly that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Hope is dwindling. It is. is it is so. Uh, it's it enco- again. It's encompassing on us to share the light. You know. Yeah. To each one teach yeah. twelve. You know to to, to yeah. be the the surrogate auntie for little little Steve or little you know I mean Sandra around the corner. Like, oh, there's artists. Yeah. I say, yeah, man, what are you up to? What yeah. are you doing? You know, that <laughs> yeah. motivation, like, yeah, man, I, I, I can do what she's doing. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the goal. If if I can inspire even one person, obviously as many as I can, but even one person to just feel like 
okay that's where I want to be or even an aspect of something that I'm doing it might not be you know the whole package of singing the songwriting producing and you know doing all this stuff but it might just be the, the writing or anything like that if I can inspire one person that's that's the goal that's the dream. Yes. And um, you're doing it. Well, you're doing it with whether they DM you and, and let you know, Wagwan. You're doing it, man. When you're walking these yeah. streets, you know, holding your head high, being the, the black woman you are, people are seeing that, yeah? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm Definitely, in man. There. Definitely. So you, you've always been um, a creative, a, um, a mm-hmm. persona. A um, and also you had the the mathematical. You said you was really into maths and stuff. Did you say? Um, yeah. So I I think probably straight through school, I just I loved maths. Um, and I just I to be honest, I'm just someone that likes to learn new things, mm-hmm. and I like to be challenged. If something is too boring, I'm I need I need more. I'm always looking for new ways to yes. learn and figuring things out. So yeah, I did have my academic kind of side in school going straight from primary school to secondary school. Mm-hmm. And then even I went to university and I did um, law and theatre, which has got nothing to do with music. Wow. <laughs> what kind um, of law? What, what, law? what law subjects? Was it criminal um, law? Or? It, was, it was general. So within my years, I did land law, criminal law, um, contract law, and oh. the basics of them all. And then decided, nah, nah. <laughs> okay. Nah. I have the stuff that I need yes. to take with me. And but, yeah. those are very much transferable skills, especially for what yeah. you're doing now. Exactly. A hundred percent. So it's not it's not wasted. I can still use yes. it, use what I have. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. good. So so let's yeah. fast forward a little. So actually, no, 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 no. Before we fast forward, religiously yeah. or spiritual wise, what did we grow up as? um grew up Christian so I mean my mum never my mum never forced it on us Mm -hmm. but she let us know where she stood okay um and I was always like even when we were when we grew up we were kind of like she's a she's the example that we want to be so we kind of all went in that path if that makes sense yes so yeah grew up Christian I'll say okay what 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 denomination um protestant no uh, pentecost not protestant pentecostal ignore me pentecostal. oh the the um yeah the, the hand clapping the and lively hand ones <laughs> the lively ones oh, yes, yes. Man. give oh, yeah. thanks give thanks i know that dear <laughs> very yeah. entertaining um oh, yes yeah. I, I like it I like it and are you are you, you still following in the word yeah yeah good to yeah. hear good to hear because remember he yeah. only left you basic instructions before leaving earth yeah wow yeah I have to I have to um this is what my mum reminds me almost every day and I, it's it's to be honest it's not easy and being a young person growing up in the world exactly. it's not easy to, no no to, and, and you know to be honest it's kind of like which I say to people all the time whether I am fully in it or sometimes I'm just like not buying into it or things confuse me or I go or go crazy or whatever it is I, I'm happy with with the life that I live, yes. if that makes sense. So Perfect. like even the choices that I make, I'm like, this this is the life that I want to live anyway, whether mm. it's whether whoever I'm following or whatever it is, I'm happy with the choices. And I will always encourage, or if I have a younger niece, uh, nieces and nephews, and I will always encourage them, try and do this, make sure you do this, don't do this. Yeah. And I can try and be an example in that way at least. So yeah exactly sometimes sometimes yeah. the sometimes your mistakes or or, or stumbles can be a, a, a visual blackboard to your yeah. friends family um so it's, yeah it's taking it's taking a positive from everything it's taking a positive yeah. from everything and, and, and trying to, to to build on that very good exactly. to hear very yeah. good to hear so w- when did we actually start to um 
what came first the singing or singing songwriting or the production oh um do you know um, it's a difficult question because I've I've only labeled myself as a producer about seven months ago okay because I didn't realize I was doing it so now I'm actually doing it understanding that I'm doing it which I've I'm not gonna claim that I was before because I didn't know I was doing it but um I guess the, the it all started I'm gonna say when I was 15 um because I, I I was doing it before in school for fun mm-hmm. um and doing random things and I started playing the guitar when I was 15 and that's kind of when everything started snowballing I started writing music and performing to in in my room to myself and all of that stuff kind of came together yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay <laughs> so what, what 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 musically inspired you what were we jamming at this point then in in your teenage years what was popping oh. what was on heavy rotation in the cd te- in a cd player oh goodness that's a good question i don't even it's it was a mix of loads of things. So at the time I picked up playing the guitar, it was because I was very into like what was on TV. So I was watching like Disney Channel and like Nickelodeon and all those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to think like who who was on those shows. I can't even remember. But I remember it's been watching. so long. <laughs> I just I can't even. I thought, I thought yeah. <laughs> but I remember watching. And just being like, oh, they're playing the guitar. I'm playing the guitar. Um, and just picking them up, picking it up. And I remember I asked my mum for a guitar at the time and she said no. And she said no because I was very, like I said, I like to try new things and do loads of things. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to try swimming. Can, I, can you get me some, some goggles and a hat? And they'd buy it. I'd do it for a week and be like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> can I have some ballet shoes now? And all of these things. <laughs> And it got to the guitar and she kind of put her foot down at this one, ironically. I was like, no, you're not having it. Mm-hmm. And I asked my dad and they both kind of said no. And I remember I used to um, write out the chord structures from the internet and like sit there on my bed late at night and put my wow. finger in the positions and stuff yeah, yeah, without yeah. a guitar. And I, I feel like she saw that I was a bit, a bit more serious about this one. Yes. <laughs> so... Yeah. He came home with a guitar. My dad came home with a guitar as well. And it kind of all started from, from there. Yeah. And I was like, able to actually put those into practice and play the mm. guitar and taught myself YouTube, figured it out. And yeah, 10 years later, I'm here. <laughs> so what, what did you put yeah. out on YouTube first then? Um, mm. it, was mainly, it was mainly like random covers, but there were never anything serious so at, at the time when I was 15 and I started um, playing the guitar I kind of gave up on the idea of doing music um so I remember why 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 let's probably... let's, ex- let's explore that so what why did you <laughs> give up what was you thinking of giving up on music at that point um so when I when I started secondary school I was really like okay maybe I should look into this performing things and when you get to secondary school the production of things or from my school the production of things went to the next level so there weren't uh school assemblies just dancing on stage and doing routines that you did in the playground (laughs) they were like they had set stage sets and they had like um stage lights and cameras and they filmed it and it was just a full-on production um yeah so i remember going to secondary school and auditioning for things and I was in year seven, so I wasn't getting the big roles. I was like, that's fine. I'm going to work my, my way out. It's cool. They just don't know me yet. It's fine. I'm going to get there. It, um, <laughs> and then literally, they'll, they'll get to know. It's fine. Um, and then, yeah, just the more, the older you get, it's a time where everyone's kind of going through their hormonal stages. And yes. that's when you, people start gossiping about each other and just like, spreading negative things Mm -hmm. and yeah it was a it was a bad time for me (laughs) um I was I always say to anyone anyway I was pretty much bullied around that time so 14 everyone kind of knew who I was my sister was in a year above me so everyone knew who I was and my older older brother was 
in the school before so all the teachers knew who I was my sister knew who I was I was semi like kind of well behaved so the teachers knew who I who knew who I was um and then yeah just I just people just didn't like me I don't know why um do you know why now I can I can say now that it's just because I had my hand in everything I was always involved always wanted to be around everyone everyone knew who I was and people didn't people didn't take to that or and and on top of that I'm a pretty positive person so Mm -hmm. I feel like when you have this person that's always there was always being mentioned and they're just so happy people want to kind of tear you down a little bit exactly um so I I obviously didn't know that at the time I was just a young girl Mm. 13 14 15 years old thinking okay everyone hates me and then yeah got to about 13 14 I had no going from being Miss Popular yes. to having no friends, um, none like having to, no, no friends. So oh, I remember, I remember man. specifically, I remember specifically in the in the lunch hall kind of canteen area, mm-hmm. there was a table that we all sat at together. All the girls, we'd go in for lunch. And there was about 10, 15 of us that kind of used to occupy the front table and like one of the tables at the side Mm -hmm. and I remember one day everyone kind of just stopped like no one spoke to me people didn't like me and I I I still don't know why there wasn't any like something happened or I upset someone and they all turned against me it was just literally all of a sudden and then I went into the canteen and no one obviously was speaking to me so I had to sit on my own and I sat like an idiot right next to the table where we all used to sit. <laughs> and I remember just there were little comments and little yeah. remarks and looking and laughing. And from that day, I was like, I'm never eating in that canteen again. I used to bring little snacks from home yes. and just eat in the playground on my own. I had oh, no, no man. friends at all, um, and- which, I mean, it taught me, taught me a few things. So Listen, sis, goodbye. it's made you the person who you are today. Oh, praise of the most high. Yeah, exactly. yeah, man. Yeah. So exactly. it's it's and yeah. at, at, at that age as well, the, those pivotal ages, that's when you're finding out who you are, you know, you're oh, socially yeah. adapting and stuff, becoming yeah. a young adult. So it's awful if you know to go through that. Um yeah. It, 100%. It, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Um, yeah, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. It's not, it definitely wasn't nice. Um, and I even remember the teachers like calling my mum in and just saying, is Sasha okay? Because we've noticed she's been on her own and so on. And my mum was like, really, I, I feel like genuinely my mum and I started learning to play the guitar at the time. So like I was listening to a lot of music and trying to pull in. Yes. And so my mum and music just, I would say saved my life completely because it was a very, very, very dark, dark mm. time. Um, so I kind of stopped because of all that kind of peer pressure and then going from being somebody in primary school who was known as like the singer the performer the everything and then going into secondary school and I don't know because I I did a lot people would make a point of coming to me and be like uh you can't sing or she sounds much better than you anyway and I was such a pushed over I was yes. like, okay I can't sing I'm just gonna stop singing then I'm just not gonna do it anymore I give up jealousy um, did you, well, this is how wicked that children can be and yeah. unfortunately they're, they're not they're not born that way I mean some people are just born yeah. wicked and evil let's not get that twisted but generally the children yeah. who go to school and then will do horrible acts like this because what's, what's going on in their home life you know, are they mm-hmm. getting bullied at, by their older sister? Is yeah. their mother and parents not actually enriching them and making them feel worth something? Because exactly. generally, those kind of people, they ain't shit going on in their life. Hence, yeah. they want to try and jump in somebody else's life, innit? Yeah, a hundred percent. You could you could always tell though. It was the same. It was the same kind of people, and mm. you knew, okay. And you kind of know bits of people's story as well, yes. so you know they're not okay. But at a young age, you're not really paying attention to that and you're not yeah. putting two and two together. Like, mm-hmm. okay, they're struggling at home, so they're taking it out on you. You're just yes. you're just thinking everyone hates me and 
yeah so I I mean I had to watch other people go through it as well um it's just it is a it is an awkward time I couldn't stand my secondary school years it just was the worst section of life for so me. was it so was it all the way from year seven to whatever because um, to all the year left I would, I would say year seven was good and then it got to year eight it kind of started to get a bit rocky year nine was terrible year 10 was terrible year 11 was okay because I kind of got to the point where I was like I don't need anybody any, right any. now <laughs> I'm okay I can survive and it's very funny because when I when probably like year eight when it started to go rocky and then year nine when I was completely on my own it wasn't it wasn't until year 11 where I kind of said or the end of year 10 I was kind of like I, I'm just going to do it on my own I don't need anyone I'm happy with me that people kind of started to flock back and it was like okay. oh yes I'm, I'm high mm. and it was like it's very interesting that and it's just a perfect example and that's why I will always say to everyone stay true to yourself know who you are and be unapolog- unapologetically you because the people that like you will like you the people the people are going to like you will not like you whether you're being yourself or not being yes. yourself at the yes. end of the day so you might as well be happy in who you are mm-hmm. and the people that do like you you know they genuinely like you for you and the ones that don't they can go about their business mm, yeah, definitely <laughs> them can go on <laughs> literally because I we we don't have time for that energy. No but time, no time. I mean, listen, listen. Trustfully, they're now in a, a, a you know they've matured. They've got a little bit of wisdom now, and they can look back at that time and think, "Oh shit, yeah, I was a yeah. horrible motherfucker back then, man." You yeah. know, let, what what can I do to remedy that? If I can't find the people mm-hmm. who I was terrible to, how let me enrich the youth around me. Yeah, you know? exactly. I hope they're in that mindset and in that place. I mean, you do get people that just don't learn and they're probably still going on. And I, I hope, and even even though they, they did me wrong and made me feel a certain way, I genuinely hope they never have to feel what they put me through because, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a nice feeling. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Um, so, yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah without a doubt and yeah you know hurt people hurt people ultimately exactly. that's, that's that's exactly it mm. so I, I, again yeah. coming back to this 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 community spirit and you know and i know these days parents can be quite protective but you know seek some guidance you know if you have an unruly child which is now which i would label a kid a baby goat running around this here wild um seek some wise counsel <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean if you've done yeah. everything within your power to try and rein this little terror in go to the auntie go to the yeah. you know to your friend you know seek some as i say some wise counsel and see if you can make some some changes because the longer that behavior in um uh, persists the more trouble which is gonna be, be coming your way and with how wild these exactly. these these little ones are these days you know what i mean like yeah, don't take any chances <laughs> knock it just get it done most you definitely out straight away yes yeah. so the 15 100%. 15 we said nah larry you know blah 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 yeah. um what made us fall back in love with it again and, and try and pursue it in in, in more oh. detail what age was this I would say 21. Um, yeah, so I, at 15, I, I decided I'm focusing on my studies and did my GCSE, did my A-levels, went to uni, did law. And then it wasn't until halfway through law, I was like, I don't think this is, what, this is not really what I want to do. Um, I enjoy it and I enjoy learning and it's good to know, but music is is where my heart is. And um at the age of 21, I was working in a youth club and it was, one, it was actually my old head of year who kind of brought me in and they had a music studio there. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like the, the, old, the old head of year was like, she obviously knew I sang. So she, she said, can you sing at the opening? I was like, 
what, me. What do you mean? Did, did you not? Were you not in the same school I was in? You know the experience. No. <laughs> But yeah, she asked me, can you sing the opening? And I was like, okay, fine. So I sang. And then the guys who were kind of in charge of the studio, they So, so were whoa, like, whoa, okay. whoa, 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 Sashi. You can't just spring over that so quick. <laughs> nah, don't worry, don't worry. But right, so we ain't done nothing from 15, you know, 21. And then you're going to go sing for an opening of a song. I know. I know. I, it was, it was, yeah, it was scary. <laughs> it was scary um it was it was kind of like how I saw it then even though it wasn't all those other people from school that were that were there yes yes singing to my head of year she was kind of a representative of everyone in the school then so Ah. I was like I have to I have to do this I have to prove Mm. my even if it comes out terribly and I haven't performed in a long time so whatever it sounds like I just it just has to be done just do it mm. for yourself yes as like some sort of liberation um so yeah I I sang and it was okay <laughs> it was good <laughs> it was good um and then the guys who were in the studio in the youth club were like oh you're actually okay have you done any recording in the studio I said nope never um, and they kind of just brought me in and I, I remember not taking it seriously then because they booked me in for sessions and I'd be like yeah I'll be there and I'd just forget or I'd never show up and just not do what I was supposed to do so I remember not taking it seriously so I think around the age of 21 I kind of was like okay let's let's record let's do stuff let's see what happens and I've just decided that's just what I, what I want to do I want to make music I want to sing to people I want to share some positive messages and yeah just get get some positive vibes out there through my music so is it through your experiences why you do the type of music you are or have you been inspired by another artist per se um I just to be honest write what I know so I've tried to write songs that I've seen other people writing because I'm like, okay, this is what everyone's talking about. So let me try and, Mm. but it doesn't work because I can't, that's not what I've lived. It's not my life. So I literally, I, my songwriting process is really weird because I'll start writing stuff and then I'll sing it, record it. And then when I listen to it back, I'm like, Oh, this is actually literally how I'm feeling about this scenario. So if I ever, if I'm ever upset about something, I'm like, I don't know why I'm upset. I don't know why I'm angry. I'm gonna write a song, and then like it, it comes. Yeah. It's so weird. It comes out, and that's literally how it happens. So, no, I don't intend to write positive songs. I don't intend to write negative songs. It kind of just comes out. What's on the inside comes out. Yes, yeah. very that's organic. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens. So who, who who's up there, artist wise? I haven't heard any. I haven't heard you mention any artists as of yet. So who who are you rating? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Who's oh, up there for you? Man. Oh, there's there's so there's so many. How long do we have? Um, I think probably. Let's start. Let's start UK. Artists. Let's start UK, and then we can go to uh, across the waters. Oh goodness. Okay, my my top UK artist right now, someone whose album I have on repeat. Um, I would say Leanne Havis. Um, I, I literally only found out about her like a, a year ago and her songwriting style is literally exactly the same as mine. Oh, okay. Well, yes. say my songwriting style is exactly the same as hers. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think I think probably Leanne Havis. Um, is there anyone in the UK? Anyone else? What about some old heads? Not, you don't necessarily need to keep it current. Oh gosh. Not Shola Amma or Yeah, see all of all of these names, all of all of the old school mm-hmm. UK artists. Um yeah, Shola Amma, Beverly Knight, yes. they're ingrained in me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so those are those are all the, you know, Saturday morning cleaning that we yeah, used to man. do. That would be blasting <laughs> through the house, windows <laughs> open. The little bit of sun we had was out on that day and we <laughs> blasting these songs through the house. So those those are like the original, like my roots sort mm-hmm. of thing. 
um and I'm I, yeah I'm so grateful for those and those are probably like where I get my mum's it's weird because my mum and dad both have the same taste in music but my mum's more of that like yeah shall I yeah. have Beverly Night all mm. the the soulful mm. and then my dad I would say the same but like he's got like Queen the Beatles and all of that kind of that's quite that eclectic kind of then vibe. okay yeah 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 it's a range it's a range of of everything mm. um so yeah it's a it's definitely a mix a mix of loads um I don't I don't even know across the pond I, um I let's, do, let, I do let's keep it old it. school let's keep it old school then rather than new school oh old school well that's that's even worse that's that's easy man that's easy <laughs> oh, that's really it's really hard okay if I if I had to pick my top three old school artists <laughs> and let's we'll go with I was gonna say let's keep let's let's keep let's keep, to make it easy for you. Let's keep it nineties then, so you don't need to go eighties or seventies, sixties. Okay, nineties, nineties is easy. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> let's go with TLC. Yeah. Uh, Rising Paradise to Left Eye Lopez. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then let's also go. I'm gonna go. Aaliyah. Rise in Paradise, Aaliyah. Yep, you, yeah. you're nailing it. And then my final person. There's someone that just came into my head that was it. You know, actually, I'm going to go 90s Missy Elliott. That's where I'm going to go. 90s Missy Elliott. Okay, okay. Yeah. A little bit of hip-hop in that there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw that in there. I love, I love um, words. <laughs> Yes. I love, especially with songwriting, I love an artist that can that really pays attention to what they're saying and their wordplay. And Missy Elliott is someone that does that. Very talented. Off the scale. So yes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I'm so Missy. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I can see where you're going with it. Uh, uh, <laughs> many people would have many people would have thrown in Destiny Child and all them things. You know what I mean? I, but... see, I mean, I feel if, it's gotten to the point now. <laughs> it's gotten to the point where Destiny's Child is a given. If yeah. if I don't say Destiny's Child, it's implied <laughs> in the atmosphere somewhere. You you know there's a Destiny's Child influence. But it's so it's so um I I don't want to say played out because that's not the right word. Destiny's Child's obviously icons, but it's so it's too there. obvious. Yeah. It's too obvious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone was influenced by Destiny's Child. It doesn't count. <laughs> Definitely. Let me throw some. Let me throw yeah. some some male acts into this, <clears throat> since you've been quite uh, female centric. Uh, oh, I have. Sure. <laughs> uh, Whoops. The, the king, the king himself, MJ, Michael Jackson. Oh, Michael Jackson again. I mean, come on. Yeah, I, no. I can't even. I um listened to some of his classics the other day, and it's just I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Icon, legend. You, you can't <laughs> unrivaled, unmatched in regard. I oh, mean, yeah. just think of back in the day. People would would be running after his coach, crying and having fits and stuff. <laughs> People would be passing out in the concert. <laughs> you heard. <laughs> who has that oh, kind? Goodness. Who has that effect, nurses? There is just it. If anyone else did that. I, anyone else's concert right because I, I think to myself really you're passing out a concert but it's understandable because it's Michael Jackson in it, in if you're it. doing that for anyone else now I'm telling you you've got to get checked out because it's not normal it's not okay <laughs> there's something there's something actually physically wrong <laughs> this is it lack of oxygen to the brain or something yeah 100% yeah there's, there's yeah yeah check check your drink because something's not okay <laughs> Someone slipped a Mickey in that there. Oh yeah, yeah. It's only acceptable for Michael Jackson. That's mm. it. But you will never. I th- I, no one will ever. Well, even. I mean, that era. You had some big stars, man. You had some major entertainers. Um, and I, yeah, I, you've got big stars now, but I don't. They're, they're not. They're, they're dwarfed in comparison to the effect. Yeah. The emotion that they brought, that you know, so even down to Mad- Madonna. Let's go to Madonna. Yeah, she's not the yeah. best singer, but she makes some good tracks. Back in the day, yeah. I don't know about all new stuff. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like it's probably down to the fact that now the the industry is just so saturated. Like, there's, it's so easy to be famous making music. So you can be like an influencer on Instagram or use your social media to just gain a mass following yeah. and release some music and you're seen as like yeah. someone who's, you know, a, a star or a celebrity. Mm-hmm. Whereas back then, there, there wasn't any other opportunity. You would only be promoted through Talent. radio or... Yeah, exactly. And they're only, they're only promoting those things because you have a gift, because you're good mm-hmm. and very difficult to get there. Whereas now there's just so many and 90.9% of them all sound exactly the same. Well, and that, <laughs> so you highlight an excellent point. And, th- and this is another reason why you stood out to me so much because in, in this age where everyone is sounding so, so similar, yeah, you know, to be someone who says, no, no, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be individual, yeah. something that everyone strove to be as an artist coming up all the way up until, I would say, the mid-90s, um, to, yeah, 96, 97. And then it, then it was just a plethora of whatever's hot, that's yeah. what we're dropping. That's how we're going to sound. That's how we're going to dress, you know, everything. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I'm still to this day, again, always an advocate for just be be yourself and that's why so many people sound exactly the same because as you said if it works for one Mm -hmm. they're just duplicating that and doing that for for someone else and trying to make it work and the the damage is doing to some of these artists as well because some people are having to either change everything about themselves to be like this person who's above them Mm -hmm. and then the label or whoever's pushing them decides okay well there's only one Yes. this person so we're letting you go then we'll try mm. and someone else who can do the same thing and it's not it's just not it's not okay and yeah. that's why there's only the people who are actually original stay and they aren't one hit wonders and they're actually doing okay yes um people like lady gaga wearing meats to fashion shows oh, or whatever gosh. okay it's, it's crazy it but it was different <laughs> very much so it was different so very it's still here so. But now people will still try and do that and imitate it to try and, you know, be famous and wear these weird outfits and look cool. But Lady Gaga did it first, so it's not original. Is it trend sets? You know, yeah. the, the, you know, it was the, the most important and vital thing for us growing up was how different can you be from everybody else? Exactly. You know, oh, I better not buy those because everyone's got them. Let me source a place where I can, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> literally be customizing your own trailer yes. to be like this is original it's one of a kind this is it no <laughs> one's got this here you know and people yeah. be like oh, where'd you get that from where'd you get that from yeah. rather than now it's like oh you went to you went to primark and got that yeah, <laughs> you got the primark yeah. okay yeah you went to top man or top shop or yeah. you know you're in this it's it's come to a point yeah. where it's just follow fashion, follow fashion, follow fashion, follow fashion. Oh yeah. Like on steroids, man. No one wants to step yeah. out and say, "Look, no, no, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm doing it my way," kind of thing. Mhm. Mm-hmm. It's it's because of social media. People see or people want to have millions of followers, so mm-hmm. they'll see, okay, this person looks like this, and they've got loads of followers. So I'm gonna do what they're doing, and I'm gonna shop where they shop and buy what they buy, yeah. and it's gonna work for me. And mm-hmm. that's that's literally just the mentality. Or they're living this lifestyle. If I buy exactly the same things, then technically I'm on the same level as them. Yeah. It's, it's not life. It's not what it's about. I can have the uh, the appearance or the illusion of living the exactly. same lifestyle that these exactly. you know people who have the. I mean, look, let's look at it. There's nothing wrong with like having nice things and wanting nice no, things. Of Mm-hmm. But there is, there's, there's something called needs and musts, yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> like, Let's break it down. <laughs> the most basic thing that everybody needs in this world. And it's terrible that everyone doesn't have this is food, clothing yeah. and shelter. Yeah. Now, in my humble opinion, once the whole, the whole world has access to these things, then we can start looking at the luxuries like okay mm-hmm. we've got the food clothing and shelter everyone's got that there like i've got now some excess money and mm-hmm. i can treat myself to these items maybe 
Mm-hmm. No, no, it's like cart before the horse. Like you know, yeah. I, you, you go around some places and someone's wearing like sixteen thousand pounds worth of, of of bag shoes and this and that, and yeah. you're like, okay, so where do you live? Yeah, <laughs> council place around the yeah. corner. Exactly. So, exactly. Well, where are your priorities? Like, okay, like what what car have you got? Yeah, I've got um, a Lamborghini Urus or whatever the hell. Yeah. Uh, and where do you live? In that council block around the corner, mate. <laughs> like, what? We- yeah, literally driving. They're driving deposits for housing. Mm. They're driving, or they're wearing a whole deposit for a small, cute apartment yes. in central London somewhere. Mm-hmm. And the world thinks that that's okay because it's it's an instant gratification thing. If I'm driving this car. People can see now I'm rich, or if I look like this, mm-hmm. people can see right now when they look at me, they can see that I'm rich. Whereas, like my home, they can't see my house, so yeah. they don't know how I'm living and they can't yeah. see it. And I want everyone to know. And it's, mm. it's yeah, it's a warped mentality. Very, very yeah. much so. It's, as I say, there's nothing wrong with having nice things, but we gotta, you know, we gotta have have things in order, man. You know, you gotta have a nice house mm-hmm. first before we really want to be having. Yeah. As a, and don't get don't get it twisted. As a, as a youngster, you know, when you have the luxury of living with ma ma and pops, you know, and you're just breaking them off a little bit of rent every month or whatever and contribution yeah. to the house, you've got a whole heap of excess money. Go and splurge, mm-hmm. live your life, you know, yeah. as as you're growing yeah. up and experiencing this. And, you know, and then when you're 20, you can look back and think, raw, I waste a lot of money on the, all these little <laughs> trinkets still, you know what I mean? I could have bought this yeah. with that and da, da, da. Yeah. You know, you, you grow and you elevate and, you know, growth and development. Yeah. It, it seems that the, the fashion is to be stuck in arrested development where you're chasing yeah. this this youthful, you know, you want to dress like children, you want to act like children, you want to talk yeah. like children, but yet you're working, exactly. you're a big man, you've got children of your own, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is It is crazy. Sometimes if you break this down to people, they're like, Mary, that's not me. But then when they actually look in the mirror, you look at how you're living. Yeah. <laughs> look, at, look at your mentality towards life. Mm-hmm. and you'll you'll understand this, something's not working this is it man like enrich your life rather than spending the 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 the, the bag plus on a pair of these mm-hmm. spiked red bottom shoes which i won't mm-hmm. advertise take yourself on a plane you know yeah book, book two trips you know with that day and have an, an yeah. experience which you, you yeah they're not that experience isn't going to wear out <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean you're gonna have that for yeah. life yeah that's that's the the crazy thing is those experiences are for us Mm -hmm. whereas we'd rather buy the shoes which we won't promote Mm -hmm. (laughs) the shoes to be able to say to people okay this is so that the shoes and stuff and the the material things are for other people and then we're not happy because we're not getting those experiences that should be for us so we just have to start putting ourselves first again totally totally yeah as, as a as a young black female um in this modern era how do mm-hmm. you navigate the being natural as you are and not going to flipping yeah. istanbul and having this socked out and all of this foolishness and contouring this and uh, you know how have you been able to remain a a a a natural black woman in this era, Sea Star? Ah oh, man, I mean, there is there is a lot of pressure, and I I I understand the pressure on females to look a certain way. I I get it, I do. However, I just think there is something so uh, satisfying and gratifying. Uh, just just be just being who you are and I think a lot of a lot of people that do those things it just comes from a place of insecurity that's what we have to remember and females are becoming so much more insecure because of what is on social media and because of how much they're seeing these things and everything out there is becoming more accessible so Whereas before it'd be really difficult to book like a liposuction yeah. session or to, mm-hmm. you know, to do some of these surgeries. It's becoming so much more accessible. 
Um, and I was talking to somebody the other day about how easy it is to go, I think, to Turkey or Greece or wherever it yeah. is. or Turkey, I think any it of is. These places. Just, <laughs> yeah, and just have these things done. And a part of me is like, I mean, I would never do it because I'm a chicken and I'm like, I would die because I, I, I'm just, I'd just be too scared. And yeah. Yeah, I would never. Complications time, and stuff. It's exactly, like. The, the, I, I know. I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. Mm. But I, at the same time, even if I wasn't afraid, I, I, I couldn't look in the mirror and think, wow, I'm beautiful yeah. because it's not me. And that will always be something that's hanging over my head. And as you get older and you realise those things don't matter or if there are complications, you realise, was it worth it? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think owning who you are and being confident in what you look like and how you look. I've seen, with the greatest of respect, women who aren't perfect according to society that are happy with who they are and that are confident yes. and that to me exude beauty because of that mm-hmm. and are way more beautiful than these women who go and have the perfect bodies yeah. according to society yes. and that you can still see they're insecure and then where does it stop? You've done it now so then you keep going and you look like a, you know, yeah. a, a, a say, dull, but... a dull, ultimately, <laughs> yeah. a, a, a plastic. And then just like everyone look like everyone else at Mm. the end of the day because that's what everyone everyone's going to the same place to have these treatments let's face it everyone's getting the same shape and you can just see it yeah you can just see that's not you so yeah I just have to remember to that I'm happy with who I am and if I want something changed or if I'm like, okay, this needs to be altered or I'm not happy with how I look or whatever, mm-hmm. the gym is down the road. This is the thing, sis. Hard the work. work. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. It's not about, I've never been someone who's like, I need to have it now. Yeah. Unless, you know, it's on Amazon and I, I've got mm. Prime. But like, this is I'm it. Never, <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I can, live, I can live without it, but I'm like, I prefer to work hard and then see the reward yes. than cheat and stand in the mirror and have to look myself in the face and say, okay, I cheated to get here. So, yeah. And and also for, for some of these, these young women, I don't think they're fully, and maybe the, the, the consultant or the consultation isn't as forthright as it should be, or maybe they're mm-hmm. just not even thinking, but they've had the surgery. Okay. They spent three and a half grand. What about the upkeep and maintenance of that day? Cause you've oh, got to, yeah. You know, you've got to go, you've got to have, I mean, I know of a young lady and she has to, I'm sure it's on a weekly basis. She has to go and get her stuff basically massaged by a special person. So it, yeah, so it stays in the right places and doesn't float off somewhere else. Oh my goodness. And I won't put her name out there, but like, oh, wow. you know, she's very I well do, known. I didn't know that. I yes. didn't even know that. That yes. is, that's crazy. And I wonder if they're told that before exactly. they go in and have yeah. the procedure. Mm. So like, and then, oh, let's let's go even more basic because early th- thousands upwards, it was bre- breast augmentation, especially within black yeah. for black women. That was yeah. that was a very big thing. But again, yeah. you don't just put these things and leave them until you die. You've got to yeah. take them out every four years and yeah. replace them. Yeah. Yeah. Who's got the money for that there? You know what I mean? Who's thinking of like, okay, this is an ongoing maintenance. We're going to have to cut underneath this thing, fresh yeah. new scar. You know what I mean? Inconveniencing your life. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Uh, I've, I've, heard, I've heard too many stories. I've seen too many things. I, for one, just don't think it's worth it. And again, there was just something beautiful about you loving who you are. That makes you look. And on, and on top of that, We've seen through the years and through the decades, I even read an article the other day about the, the perfect body type in the 70s and the perfect oh, body type in the 80s yes. and going down the de- decade. It changes. Okay, it, I don't know how we got here where Kim Kardashian's body is like the pinnacle for what we all but, need to look like. But let's but say, let's say, that. let's, but I am glad you do and I also as well, but let, let's not get it twisted and let's put it out there. Her shape is derived from looking at who? It's a black woman. <laughs> mm, okay. 
Let's like, just put that out there. <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, if someone didn't know by now, like all of this surgery is to make, to, I mean, uh, Sarah Bartman or Sanji Bartman, you know who that lady, young lady is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Based upon her shape and many other shape, a whole fashion industry was created in the uh, in that era where women would have contraptions around themselves to make them look like they have very yep. pronounced rear ends, right? Yep. Yep. This this has been oh, done oh. throughout time, but this was not surgical because they didn't have the capabilities back then to be able to do it surgically. Mm -hmm. So they did it in the outer garments. Yeah. And now yeah. we've gone to the point now where, you know, <laughs> And it's always a beta test because I did the lips first. Remember when there was all those, the big lips thing? Yeah. <laughs> I was putting Gore-Tex in their lips and all that kind of stuff. And it was like, okay, who has big <laughs> voluptuous lips? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> yeah. And it's it's funny because these are the things, like even me personally, and I know other other females went, the black females went through the same thing, but these are the things we'd get attacked for, yes. bullied for, or like the comments that we'd make um, and even like down to hairstyles that yes. we have. Oh, oh, that's not professional or that doesn't look good or, but then someone else does it yes. who is not the yes. same and it's okay. And it's a trend. It's, it's fashion. fashion it's cool. now. Like, no, I, I remember a few years ago, they tried to uh, create this narrative that Kylie Jenner um, <laughs> made the, the cane rose yeah. famous yeah and yeah I, I i was one of the women that wasn't having it <laughs> i bet you wasn't i bet you wasn't sissy it's nonsense not having it. mm -mm, mm -mm. from when i was in in primary school and my exactly. mum had that protective <laughs> hairstyle and i had to sit there <laughs> as she dragged my head with yes. the comb and the, the conk, if you weren't yeah. doing the right thing, and, and the grease. <laughs> the dax. That, that's real. <laughs> you heard the dax. <laughs> oh, I know the God. ones, man. <laughs> that's the real, that's braids. That's cane rose. I don't know what, what Kylie Jenner mm -hmm. endured, but yep. I know it wasn't that pain. <laughs> you don't have cane rose without the pain. It's not the it's, same thing. You already know oh, the goodness. things, is, man. You already yeah. know. I, <laughs> when I was a youngster in my teens, I had cane rolls and shit. And that, the first time I had them done, the Empress did it for me. I was, I was in, I was in tears, man. I was like, yeah. and you women have had to go, especially down at the back by your back of your neck. I'm like, yo, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, it's not even during. It's not even during. It's afterwards when you got to go to sleep or when oh, you yeah, got to put yeah, your head fresh, down and yes, you're just yes. like scalps are yeah. tender like a mole. <laughs> Most, oh yes yes yeah. memory that's lane the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> that's the struggle that's what kylie jenner doesn't know anything yeah. about so um we've got to get to a place where we start taking those things back mm -hmm. and owning our roots and also not being afraid to be like and challenge these these things because as much as we can stand up and say hold on you know this is wrong a lot of it is just coming from a place of uneducation. They they don't know. They mm -hmm. don't have the understanding. They don't fully understand our culture and our roots and our heritage and where we come from. So it's the education is coming. That's fine. I'm happy to educate. Anytime. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And we need and not just for for other nations, but for 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 us as well. Um, oh yeah. Our story, our history is 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 a, a lot older than our foreparents being prisoners of war. Mm -hmm. It goes back mm -hmm. a lot longer than that, mine. <laughs> you know. Uh, um, yes. And 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 let's put this out there: all brown people were not kings and queens. Because yeah. think about it: who would be serving under the kings yeah. and queens? <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yeah. That title, it's a lofty title. I understand it's for self-esteem purposes, but every black, yeah, yeah, yeah. every black man is not a king or a queen. Yeah, yeah. Again, hey. we have to make sure we stay educated. A hundred percent. If you ain't learning, you're dying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Yes, indeed. So what, what can we look forward to um, musically-wise? Oh, 
um gosh yeah it's again it's up and down up and down yeah. but I'm currently working on some music to release in the future hopefully something this year okay. um so Hello, yeah EP I mean, some? yeah I'm, I'm so bad when it comes to that that stuff like getting music out the performing <laughs> is okay and I, I could do performances and sing to people yes, yes and they're like where can we hear it and I'm like hmm um <laughs> give me give me Give me three years, but yeah, no. This year, I've decided I need to. I need to have some stuff. Together. A body of work. You need yeah, to put it exactly. together. Yes, a hundred percent. So yeah, I'm definitely. I've promised myself, and I'm. I have to stick to it. I'm going to release something this year, hopefully in the form of an EP. Mm-hmm. And yeah, maybe maybe September on okay. it'll be like our official release my music release but our official release date yes. as well so yes I'll, I'll get something out soon give thanks i'm very very yeah. very much looking forward to hearing some of that dear sis um you. you're most welcome are you interested in, or are you up for working with any other artists maybe yeah so i've got i've got a studio in my house and i do everything on my own so obviously i'm producing and do all the mix and the mastering stuff so I'm really bad uh, I, I thought that I don't want to but I'm very like oh I'm just gonna do it myself and independent in that way yeah so this year I've kind of vowed to make sure I'm reaching out and networking to people and it's there's a lot of less there's a le- less pressure for me because obviously everything has to be done virtually yes. so yeah I've, I've started songwriting with other people and collaborating and getting some ideas and hopefully some like collaboration stuff will come out in the future as well definitely yeah. want to hear some of that dear sis and if, if that is if that's your um your 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 goal i will definitely yeah. um throw some people your way as well um yes for locally sure. and internationally obviously so we can you know get it out there for you yeah 100 percent. I'm, de- I'm always looking so just throw anyone at me <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. The very last question, uh, two last questions for you as we wrap this build up, sis. Yeah. First one is, have you had fun today? No, I feel like, no, I'm joking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're the first one to drop that. I love it. <laughs> Can you imagine? I just, I just, uh, just to ask, what would you have done if I'd said no? <laughs> I tell you what, I would have, I would have, we would have had a, we would have extended the build and we would have went into some more detail and I would have picked away and chipped and think, oh, okay, oh right, God. all right then, yeah, some, some, some tips here, you know. Oh, goodness, no, it's definitely, it's definitely been a lot of fun and I love having, uh, a compliment to you, I love having conversations with, with intelligent people, so people that are just not surface level, we can actually unpick and look at you know society as a whole and the the problems beneath the surface and just having a full-on discussion and debate so I've definitely had fun and yeah I've learned a new things and written down and like yes. got some nuggets as well so yeah, yeah it's, it's been it's been great give it's thanks, yeah. give <laughs> thanks. Love, it. love the energy um very lastly very last one mm-hmm. for you we know your name so could you tell us who you are, but don't tell us your name? Oh, that's a hard question. <laughs> oh, oh, in terms of like what I do or just who I am? Who oh, you are. Hard. And what you do is part of who you are. Who you are. So it's a, it's a double, a double whammy. Wow. Okay. Let me, let me see what I can muster up. I am a, okay. I am a positive songstress with a soulful, old school energy. That's that's it. That's all I can. All good. All good. You you know you you knew where I was going. I like to I like to challenge the mind. I like to get the neutrons firing that grey matter. (laughs) <laughs> accessing the left and right hemispheres of the brain <laughs> I mean <laughs> I mean yeah that that was difficult I don't, I don't that's the, probably the hardest question I've ever been asked in my life so well, th- I'll tell you <laughs> what like... d- dwell on that sis dwell on that for, for the next couple of days and you'll be surprised what you're yeah. up with because it, it, it's okay it's you're a lot more than that you are so much more than that 
Yeah. And I, I know this a little bit. I know a little bit based upon our conversation and from, from you know your Instagram and stuff, but you know yourself mm-hmm. better than I do. So as I say, you yeah. you encompass a whole load more than that, dear. Yeah, let me let me let me think about it. I'm about to send you a long winded email like this yeah, is what I have. This is what I have. <laughs> Give it text. Let me think about it. <laughs> yeah. So where can everyone get hold of you for all your social medias and stuff? Um, so all of my social medias are at Sasha Official, the S A C H A Official. Um, the only one that isn't that is my SoundCloud, which is it's Sasha Official because someone stole Sasha Official, oh. unfortunately. Um, but yeah, everything: Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, and then if you go to YouTube and type in Sasha T, you'll find me. And then on Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff again is just Sasha T, S A C H A T. But everything is on my instagram so that's probably the best place to go because you'll find everything you need to find there which is sasha official perfect i will make sure i put links below in the comments well in the description even um make sure you go over and check this decision out man see what new flavor she's coming with um unique very talented um and jump (laughs) on the socials as well man jump on them so that social media make sure you follow you know, and if you, you're an artist yourself, you know, there's someone here who can who can do it all. And with this virtual thing, it's easy as a one, two, three, an email and a ting and a, yep, it's done. <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah, definitely hit me up. So tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe, like, comment, and most definitely share.